Hello and welcome to the section 11.2 lecture today for Algebra 1 Part 1. Um, today we're going to be looking at, or I guess start looking at special angles uh, that happen when we have parallel lines. So, a couple things to get started. We've got a lot of definitions today because that's really what drives uh, the conversation. Uh, to start off, parallel lines. Um, you know, before we talked about more the algebraic representation, uh, we are kind of in geometry. And, you know, in algebra, we say that parallel lines are lines that have the same slope. In geometry, we more talk about just uh, straight lines. That never intersect. Okay, and then a transversal is a line that crosses two or more lines. And to be kind of specific, um, let's say at, um, at unique locations. just saying that it's not a very good transversal if you have a picture like this, okay, where this is your transversal. And, and everybody gets kind of upset when you start talking about transversals, and I draw this picture because we learn it when we have parallel lines, and I don't have any parallel lines here. You don't need parallel lines to talk about a line being a transversal. Okay, so that was a perfectly valid picture. Um, but it, it wasn't a very good, tra it, it wasn't actually a transversal because it intersected those two lines at the same spot. Okay. Uh, for the rest of these, instead of going with definitions, I'm going to assign some angles, some pairs of angles, uh, excuse me, these different, uh, rep these different, categories, I'll say, um, these different titles. Uh, so the first one is corresponding angles, okay? The way I think about corresponding angles is if I think about the picture of this intersection, of this two-line intersection, okay, and I, I'm just trying to envision this intersection, um, and actually let me Write a one, two, three, and four. And that's going to kind of mess up. Let me uh, do this and that. So if I think about this intersection and I take that intersection down to the other one, this shows me which angles are corresponding. Corresponding angles basically means kind of the same relative location, but at a different intersection. So up here, angle one's in the top left. Down here, angle five's in the top left. So angle one and angle five are corresponding angles. Okay, I can make the entire list, angle two and angle six. Angle three and angle seven and angle four and angle eight. Those are all sets of corresponding angles. Okay. Now the trick with corresponding angles or the, the kind of big thing about them is that when my lines are parallel, when line M and N are parallel and cut by transversal T, instead of saying that these are pairs, I could also say, let me actually do it this way. Try to pull it down here just a little bit, I guess. Um, I could also say that they're what we call congruent angles. Okay, or they're the same size. Um, it's probably not the best thing to say the same angle. Um, 
but I'm going to write that they're congruent. All these pairs of angles are congruent, which means they're the same size, same shape. Okay, And for us, what we're really going to use out of that is that their measurements are equal. That'll be the thing that we focus on. Okay, I'll get, go ahead and get rid of my picture here. I'm not going to use that anymore. Um, alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are on the interior, and so we kind of think about two areas of parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, all this area here that's in between the two parallel lines is named <clears throat> is named the interior and the outside is called the exterior so I have exterior out here and exterior out there so that would be this area and all these angles are considered to be exterior angles because it's outside of the two parallel lines. Okay? So when we're talking about alternate interior angles, we're talking about angles that are on the interior of the parallel lines. And alternate refers to sides of the transversal. Okay, so... Like for alternate interior angles, we have four and five, three and six. There's only two pairs. So angle four and angle five, angle three and angle six. And those are pairs of alternate, ex sorry, alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles are kind of the same thing just on the outsides of the parallel line. So I have two and seven. And I have angles one and eight. Now, again, to look specific at these. Let's go there. Um, what I'm really going to use out of these facts is that these sets of angles are also congruent, or they have the same measurement. And some of these aren't so hard to understand, especially once we accept the top on the corresponding angles, right? Because if angle one is the same as angle five, <coughs> sorry, we learned in the last section that one and four were the same because they're vertical angles. Well, if one and four are the same and one and five are the same, so a quick little idea there, if angle one, I'm gonna use the measure, of angle one equals the measure of angle four, and the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle five, then really what those two statements come together to say is that the measure of angle four is equal to the measure of angle five. Okay, so all these, we're gonna say they're congruent. We're mainly gonna use, again, that their measurements are equal. That's technically by the definition of congruent angles. And then the last one that we're gonna talk about has many names. This is only one of them, uh, one of the more common names, I would say. Um, I'd really, I mean, I say there's many names. I think there's probably a solid two, two sets of names that I've heard this described as. Uh, but what we're going to call it is consecutive interior angles. Okay. And so that's going to be two angles that are on the interior, so they're in the yellow and consecutive. Another, another name for it that makes a little more sense, it's just a little more writing, is same side interior angles, okay? Meaning they're on the same side of the transversal. 
So for that, I'd have angle four and angle six. and angle three and angle five. Okay, that's another set of uh, consecutive interior angles. They're on the same side. I kind of think of it as, you know, I'm coming down M here. Oh, I run into angle four. I go ahead and turn. Oh, I ran into angle six. And then I, you know, then I leave. And I hit those two in order, four and six, and then I left. Um, they have a different type of relationship, and that is that <clears throat> a little more specific, I guess. Um, it's really the only one that we talk about that's different, but the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle six equals 180. In other words, these two sets of angle, or these two sets of two angles are each supplementary. that they add up to 180 degrees. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at some problems where we look at the relationships. I'm not looking for any of the any of the number implications of these. I'm just wanting to name them today. I'm going to go back over all these uh, congruences, meaning equal measures. I'm going to talk about all those again tomorrow, but um, this is kind of a preview to that. And, and we'll go ahead and look at it. So um, I want to look at the, I want to name the relationship from that list above. I either have, and, and we can shorthand. I always get people that want to. Um, I think it's, you can write it shorthand, but I do want to hear you say it because I think there's a verbal connection um, to saying these things. So we can say corresponding angles, um, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, or consecutive interior angles, the CIA. I think that's the whole list. Yes, it is. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Between X and Y in this one, they're on the interior, and they're on the same side of the transversal. So that's going to be consecutive interior angles. The next one, X and Y, they're still on the interior. This time they're on the opposite sides of the transversal. You have to cross over that transversal to get to the other one. So they're alternate interior angles. On the third one here, X and Y, they're on the exterior this time. That really cuts me down to two possibilities. Um, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal, so they're alternate exterior angles. These two on the inside, on the same side, so they're consecutive interior angles. This is an easy way to tell uh, one that we haven't talked about yet. And that is that I have two angles, one's on the inside and one's on the outside. More of what I'm looking for is that this is on the top right. This is on the top right. So they are corresponding angles. And then the last one, I have one on the outside, one on the exterior, one on the interior, but it's in one intersection. Okay, these are ones that we talked about yesterday, but they're vertical angles. Okay, anyways, write any questions you have over on the left, and uh, otherwise, have a great day, and we will see you in class.